Welcome back. Our next guest has been the play-by-play -play voice of the Indianapolis 500 race for over 45 years. Now, Paul Page has taken pen to paper. He's written a book about his experiences, and he's here to tell us more about it on The Mix. Good morning, Paul. How are you today? Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm um, well. I've got your book right here. Uh, why did you decide All to write right. this? Yeah, Paul Page. Uh, uh, hello, I'm Paul Page. It's race day in Indianapolis. What was the motivation? Why did you decide to write this? Well, I, uh, I had such a great life, and I wanted to write an autobiography that included certainly the great Indianapolis 500. That's why the title, Hello, I'm Paul Page, is the way I always opened the television show. And then on Indy 500 day, I'd say it's race day in Indianapolis, you know, give it a little a pizzazz there. But I have so many good stories, uh, not a kiss and tell, but fun stories about these great drivers and these incredible people. And then also when I was... Uh, when I was working in network television, I got assigned to like the Olympics and to, I was hosting of the America's Cup and all kinds of other things. And I kind of wanted to tell that story well, as well as my my personal life. And I first started the uh, um, my coverage of uh, my actual visit to the Speedway in 1960. And the last history of the Speedway, good one, actually ended in 1959. So I brought it forward historically until the 100th race, and that's the tail that we hang everything on. I love that ABC broadcast booth, Major Star. It's a strange, co <laughs> strange coincidence that my co-host Leanne Town has the exact same thing on her door. It's very, very strange. So Perfect. <laughs> exactly. You're, you're going down memory lane here. So, you, you, I mean, this going down this, this many years, I mean, 40, 50 years of the sport, it's got to have changed so much over the years. What stands out? Well, when I started, the cars had the engines up in the front, and they had giant cockpits with giant steering wheels. And um, so that was the primary change, the technological change, but also the nature of the change in the driver's attitude. When I first started, these guys were rough and tumble, and uh, they, uh, they, there'd be fist fights and everything. And <laughs> now we're much more sophisticated, though I kind of miss some of the fist fights. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there, was a, there was some good drama there, some good action. And then the media coverage of sports. I mean, it, it really has, just the actual job itself has changed quite a bit too with all this technology. Yeah, when I first started, there were only three major television networks. And uh, ESPN didn't come on the air until the fall of 79. And uh, so that suddenly changed the entire sports complex and the sports world. And so I ended up with on ESPN. I was at NBC Sports for a while. And then I did a lot of work and some producing with ESPN. And then finally, when the Indianapolis 500 mile race went live in 1986, I had been doing radio since 1977. And it was the only live availability of the Indianapolis 500. So. When uh, we went over to the live ABC, ABC called me, and then I became the face of the 500, along with Bobby Unser and Sam Posey. I can only imagine. I'm, I'm a former radio guy myself going into television, what that felt like for you. I think we might be able to relate when you got that call, like, oh, they're going to see me? <laughs> well, let me tell you, radio is, radio is the absolute best training for any job, including news jobs. I did a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, radio news and uh, television. I. I really prefer to be on the radio, which I will be on race day. <laughs> and, no, I have know, the face for radio. Yeah, that's what they say, right? <laughs> when it comes to uh, broadcasting, I mean, obviously, you've done you've done a lot. Uh, what about advice for those looking into sports broadcasting? I'm sure, like for me, I, I say Pat Hughes has my dream job because he does play-by-play -play on radio for the Chicago Cubs, right? There are people who listen to you and know your voice and know that race day in Indianapolis call, and they think, man, that's something that I want to look into. Do you have any of that in the book? Yeah, uh, quite a bit of it, actually. And uh, my my guidance is always, one, follow your passion. But I do have a caution for those who want to do what I do, which is on the road all the time doing sporting events. Mm -hmm. And that is think about your family and think about how you're going to gauge your life and how you're going to be able to communicate if you're gone every weekend for uh, for most of the year. What do you do with a family? Do you get married young? Do you wait a little bit? I worked it out. I worked it out fine. I've got two great kids and uh, both successful now. And uh, but I I had a traditional dinner on Tuesday night, which was our off night and return night. Always had dinner with the kids and the whole family. And that 
that kept everything going. Uh, good advice in there to make sure you keep your family in mind before you jump into that dream yes. job, that career. Fascinating read. I cannot wait to dive right into this. I'm sure I'm going to see a lot that I can relate to. Hello, I'm Paul Page. It's race day in Indianapolis. That book now available at Schuler Books, Barnes & Noble, Woodland Mall, Amazon, yep. basically wherever you can get a book. Uh, you can also go to cardinalpub.com. Paul, thank you so much for the time this morning. Hey, thank you very much. I'm glad to be with you guys. Absolutely.